My name is John Alvarado, and I'm here to talk to you today just a little bit about a really great guitar concert opportunity that's going to be coming to Clues Hall this fall. In October, Clues is going to be hosting three great modern masters of the, of the guitar, uh, Eric Johnson, Pepe D'Agostino, and uh, Andy McGee. All three of these players come from really different backgrounds, different influences, different approaches to the guitar, but I think the thing that really unites the three of them is that through their kind of unique approach to playing, through their technical mastery of the instrument, and through their um, emphasis on musicianship and musicality, all three of them have really helped set new standards for guitar playing and kind of helped uh, redefine our expectations of what the instrument is capable of. Eric Johnson is kind of one of those guitar players who's reached real cult status amongst guitar players. The guitar world is full of guitar heroes and guitar greats and guitar gods, but one player whose name is almost universally respected is Eric Johnson. It doesn't really seem to matter if you're talking to a classical guitarist, a rock guitarist, a jazz guitarist, a blues guitarist. If you mention Eric Johnson's name, the response is usually one of respect and admiration for his, his talents and his technique and his uh, musicianship. Um, his breakthrough album was uh, Avia Musicom in 1990. Uh, if you were playing guitar, if you were anywhere associated with guitar in the 90s, this was kind of a rite of passage for you. It was, it was required listening because he kind of gave us a road map of what the guitar is capable of in the popular music realm. There's country and western swing tunes, there's emphasis on jazz tunes, there's straight ahead blues rock pieces, acoustic finger style pieces, and all of them. It's not a hodgepodge of a guy who just dabbles in each of those styles. It's a guy who's mastered each of those styles. That album also gave us uh, Cliffs of Dover, which is uh, required listening for anybody who's playing guitar at that time. It still continues to be a really popular piece. It's easily his biggest hit. It was the piece that if you didn't play guitar, then you played air guitar to it because it was such an infectious piece. And today you don't even have to play air guitar to it because in 2007, the video came Guitar Hero, actually in their Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock edition, used Cliffs of Dover in that piece. It's one of the top tier pieces where after you go through all the levels of competition, uh, Cliffs of Dover is one of the pieces you play. So Eric Johnson's music is still inspiring and getting people interested in guitar to this day. So it really speaks to the, um, the lasting impact of his playing. Pepe D'Agostino is a totally different guitar player than Eric Johnson. Pepe D'Agostino comes from a very different background. He's an Italian guitarist, grew up in Torino, Italy. Didn't move to the United States until about 1985 when he was in his 30s. So he grew up hearing a very different type of music than Eric Johnson did. Really steeped in Italian music, Italian opera, Italian pop tunes, Italian folk music and all that kind of got mixed up in him. He also, though, had a really big interest in world music from all other cultures. He was a really big fan of Brazilian music, Samba music, Caribbean music, Cuban music, stuff like that. So all of this kind of got meshed up in Pepe D'Agostino and comes out in this new unique style. He plays almost exclusively acoustic guitar playing in the finger style as opposed to using a pick, a plectrum like a lot of rock guitar players would use. And that allows him to get a lot of different voices going on simultaneously. So he can play, for instance, a bass line with his thumb, uh, melodies on the top strings, uh, separate uh, component parts in the middle. Um, very much like a classical guitar player does. In fact, of the three, he's probably the most classical in style of the three of them. Acoustic guitarists can't really rely on the, the big amplifiers or the fancy effects pedals and the, the digital delays and echoes and distortion all that. They can't rely on all that to wow a, a listener, so they have to do it the old-fashioned way with technique and musicianship. A lot of people don't realize this, but in some ways the acoustic guitar can be a harder instrument to perform because there's nothing to hide behind. It's just the player, six strings, and a box of wood. So either you can play or you can't when it comes to the acoustic, and Pepe Steele is one of those players who absolutely can. Andy McGee represents kind of a newer generation of players. Um, he, even the way he came to fame was kind of part of the new kind of changes in the music industry. He uh, really got known as a result of YouTube. Uh, without YouTube, he may not really have a career today, not because of any lack of skill, but just because that's the way he was introduced to us. That's the way I first learned about Andy McGee, people just sharing his, his videos online. I remember getting an email from a friend, I was sitting in my office, and uh, the subject line was something like, impossible guitar. And you gotta remember, I get video clips of guitar players from students and friends weekly, you know, and, and usually if I even bother listening to them, it's for a minute or two, and then I delete it, go back to what I was doing, but with Andy McGee, it was just jaw-dropping because uh, Andres Segovia once said that a classical guitar is like looking at an orchestra through the wrong end of the binoculars. So it's like the whole orchestra compacted into this one little instrument. With Andy McGee, we can kind of rephrase that to say it's like listening to an entire rock band through the binoculars the wrong way because everything's there when he plays. The percussion is there. He's doing slaps and taps on the body of the instrument, um, doing tapping effects on the strings with both hands at the same time instead of the traditional kind of plucking of the strings. He's got the individual melody lines there, the guitar accompaniment part is there, the vocal parts there, all of it mixed into this one player with hands just flying everywhere. When you play a recording 
of Andy McGee's music for people, there's a tendency to think, well, there's got to be three or four guitar players. Um, but you see him live and you realize it's just this one guy. The techniques that he uses he, aren't new. Players have used these kinds of techniques before, but I think what separates Andy McGee is that with a lot of players, when you see them using what we call these extended techniques, is after a minute or two, when the shock value wears off, you're kind of left thinking, okay, what else is there? You know, Because we can only be shocked by stuff for so long and then we get bored. But with Andy McGee, once the initial shock value wears off, what you're left with is really engaging music. There's a real emphasis on on song structure and form, and, and, and we walk away from the concert not really so much wowed by the extended techniques, but the memorable music that he's making at the same time. And I think for all three of these players, that's probably one of the really unifying issues, is that the guitar world is full of people who can move their fingers really fast, and the guitar world is full of big names and heroic figures, and there's certainly no shortage of award-winning guitar players out there. But each of these three players the emphasis isn't so much just on the guitar technique, it's on music first. Um, they're all musicians first who happen to use the guitar as a vehicle for their expression. And, they use, and they've mastered this instrument, but they would have probably gone on to, to be great musical creators, whatever instrument they played. So I think that's really what combines the three of these players, despite their, their, their very different backgrounds, their very different approaches, all of them has this emphasis on music first. And that's what allows them to really transcend the world just kind of guitar aficionados and really speak to an audience of music lovers regardless of background.